Welcome to The Naked Truth. And now, your host, Bridget Barclay. Good evening, America. Good morning, England. Um, tonight, I have a really, really special guest that I'm so excited to, to be speaking with. Um, it is a lady called Britt Elders. Britt and her late husband, Lee Elders, wrote a most amazing and documented most amazing um, contact case with um, Edward Billy Mir out in Switzerland. So Britt is an investigated author, documentary maker, traveled all around the world uh, regarding UFOs, and she is the CEO of ShirleyMcLean.com. So let's invite Britt to the table. Hi, Britt. Hello. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm so excited for this evening, for the oh. photography, for, for the history and for the knowledge that you know on Billy Mayer, because I'm such a huge fan of Billy Mayer. Oh, oh, I'm you. shaking. I'm shaking. I'm so excited. <laughs> so thank you. So, um, Brett, mm -hmm. please tell me how you got involved in the first place with yourself and Lee, please. Uh, well, we had a company called Intercept. It was an electronic countermeasure firm. Basically, we kept banks, Fortune 500s, from being eavesdropped and wiretapped. Wow. So we oh. had, yeah, it, it was a <laughs> great company. We worked hard to get it to the place it was. Had a wonderful international reputation. And um, a friend of ours, Lieutenant Colonel Stevens, came yeah. to us and said, you know, there's this great case. I got to show you these pictures. So he mm. laid out the pictures. We took one look and said, fainted. Oh, <laughs> it's good to be true. That yeah. was the reaction. So we said, no, nope, we're not interested. Even though we had the investigative background and everything, mm -hmm. we said, no, we're not going to do this. And he went to Switzerland. Wendell did. Yeah. He came back and he came to the house and he said, you have got to get involved. And we said, why? He says, because there's even more photographs than what I showed you. Well, at that point, that was all Steve Wendell, as we called him Steve, knew about. Yeah. So we had a uh, business situation that we had to take care of in London. We decided to just pop over and go to Switzerland. We thought we'd walk in and within 24 hours, figure out how Meyer did it and come home. Right. Uh, uh, that didn't happen. What happened was we were there five days. And Meyer gave us photographs. He gave us eight millimeter movie footage. He let us have the recordings of the craft. And he mm -hmm. gave us metal samples. On top of that, we interviewed over a dozen witnesses that had seen ships, that had seen Billy come out of a contact in a pouring rain, completely dry. Mm -hmm. You know, things like that. So it was really, it was something else. And we took it home. We thought... Oh, man, we have the investigative chops. We know that if it's murder one or whatever it is, yep. counter espionage, you need to do an investigation in a very specific way. So we started finding scientists that would take a look at this. Now, this is back in the 70s yeah, when right. people did not talk about UFOs. It was a taboo subject. Um, there was just small little core groups out there that had an interest. Mm -hmm. We finally found some scientists. They led us to others. And we ended up on a seven-year investigation, just documenting all of the data, recording what the scientists said. All of them came away shaking their heads, very right. left brain men saying, yeah. No, I don't know what it is. I'm not going to say it's a UFO. I'm going to say I cannot duplicate it, and I have no clue what it is. It's very unusual. There's nothing wrong with the film footage. No. So that's, that's what they're saying now, aren't they, about some of the footage out there and, and um, what they're documenting, that they have no clue. So it's amazing back then. Yeah. It's... Uh, it's quite amazing when you get into documenting physical evidence, which makes this case so unique yeah, because right. it has two beautiful sides to it. It has mm -hmm. the side of the hard evidence, the thump on its stuff that 
passed all the tests that the scientists could throw at it. Yeah. And then it has the more beautiful spiritual side to it. Very much of so. How we need to develop as humans, how we need to connect to each other via creational energy, recognizing it in ourselves. So all of that's going on. It was just fascinating. Well, I mean, even back then in the 70s, because actually Light Years was one of the first books that, oh, yeah. I, that I bought. I worked mm -hmm. at a library, um, so, well, a little bookshop, and I saw it there on the shelf. And obviously with Light Years, it had just that little window and it had the craft, the Palladian craft. Right. And it must be a bit like the communion, um, Whitley's uh, Schreiber's book. Right. You know, it had such a stop in your tracks. And I like, I know that craft. I know that, uh -huh. you know, I just know that craft. Yeah. And I just remember just, you know, studying that book and reading that book. Absolutely fascinating. <laughs> Back then there wasn't that much, but so I then, um, I bought it on VHS. Is the uh -huh. Palladian connection? <laughs> I oh, still have it yeah, on VHS. The yeah, connection but, yeah, and being shipped the movie yeah. footage. Yeah, and and also now, isn't it now forty five years? Forty five yes. years, isn't that? Isn't it's forty five years since we published Volume One. Yeah, right. So, and the timing of it is perfect because is. we needed to bring it back. There's a new generation out there that Absolutely. needs to be aware of this. Absolutely. And there's looking back at it it's yeah. amazing to think okay yeah. 1975 myers contacts started mm -hmm. and we didn't have the technology then we have today no, we right. didn't have photoshop you couldn't create something like this in a photo program no. you didn't have ai so you couldn't manufacture Thankfully. it that way <laughs> yeah. we didn't have cell phones there you had great cameras you could hold up take movie footage or stills and we definitely did not have, and this is really important, a cold fusion process for metal production because the metals were analyzed by Dr. Marcel Vogel at IBM. And he brought in 42 other scientists because he couldn't explain it. It was pure metal, crystalline structure, and pure metal. At that point in time, what we did with metal was heat it and pour it. Right. This was a cold fusion process. So it was very unique. Plus it had thulium in it, which was a rare earth element. And thulium is extremely hard to extract and very hard to find. So when you look back all these years yeah. and you go, how would one man with one arm manufacture all of this material that science at that time could not duplicate. That's right, because I mean, some of his pictures, some of his photographs, you know, um, there's there's a very famous one with um, uh, the bicycle, and yeah. it's you know, and okay. and you just think, how, yeah, how on earth did Billy do that? Obviously, you know, his disability was his arm um, right. through through the wall, and um, you know he's just a humble guy right. and that's why they picked that the location was perfect yeah the atmosphere was perfect and you're right the timing is so on point right now with the palladian mm -hmm. connection um i spoke to david sadira yesterday and uh -huh. today actually and he said so i've got this written down let me just see i'm getting quite suave at the <laughs> because I'm really not a race knows that but right now as of this morning at night at uh, six o'clock this morning uh Pleiades is in alignment to the sun um and it started uh, an earth portal to the Pleiades today at um mm -hmm. sorry, at six o'clock this morning and it's also in line with the bear and Orion right so today and you're saying that now you're you're bringing you're bringing back out your book and the documentary as well and the documentary, which will be shipped Perfect. the end of May, yes, this this month. And it's wonderful. It was filmed in 1982. So we're basically taking you back so you can be with the investigators as they meet Meyer, they walk with him, they talk to him, mm. they get the evidence, what they do with it, how it's analyzed, how it's looked at. And it takes you all the way through, including the messages from the Palladians. So yes, it's great. Because look what I have as well. I did want to show you this. So I have 
this one. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. I have this one. Oh, you've got both of them. I know. I'm missing <laughs> one. And this one. Oh, very so I good. remember. Yeah, yeah. Hard to get now, though. And then also yes. another one. But, um, yeah, from the teachings and the transcripts. And, oh, fascinating. Absolutely yes. fascinating. And, and it's sort of like, I mean, channeled but from it's so on point even now if you if you flick through any of your our books sort of like the enlightenment books or the channel yes. books it's absolutely accurate as of now and it's you know and the information was there from billy you know in 19 early 1970s yeah. like a lot of good channelers were as well yes it's right. it's all relevant still absolutely. and perhaps in some areas it's even more relevant today than it was then i think because now i think people, we're yeah. open to it now we're oh, ready yeah. to to yeah. hear some of those uh, words that are coming us, so. us light workers now are really able to be us again and to yeah. be able to share and to be able to like document like what you're doing re-document re-looking into something so uh, such an amazing case historical case hugely yes. historical case so um i think uh race if you're there can we have some pictures please we'll show the pictures there you go so that's the original um that was now, the this original. is the new one. Oh, that's this... the new one but it's the same picture isn't it as the um the old vhs isn't it uh, no, this that is the book. That when there was oh. the book, and it's volume one and volume two combined into one book. So it's two hundred pages long. It's ten inches square. It is a really solid book filled with photographs, color, with place. <laughs> all color, color photograph photographs. Place. Yes, yeah, back with in the descriptions. Day, black yes, it's it's quite beautiful. Some people call it a coffee table book. Um, so. I've seen it on many coffee tables so far. It's yeah. just been re-released and I'm so proud of it because it came together effortlessly. It just was, it because flowed. Also, Wenzel's book, the um, UFO photographs that he's got, it's such a shame that those are black and white in his books. Yeah. You know, if they were color, they would just, it would be absolutely jaw dropping like yeah. like this book your two volumes that i'm looking forward to race can we have some pictures so then um brick can oh see there you go. <laughs> yeah. can you imagine being underneath that could you imagine that going past you you know like you know 30 40 foot above you right and you know that to hold that in the air to hold that in the air and that was that had that picture actually not that picture that when it was closer underneath the tree i remember had a lot of controversy i think they called it the christmas cake didn't they the, one yeah, the wedding cake that. yes That's it, the it's wedding a different cake, yeah. it's a different craft. craft yeah yeah and and this craft this is a series of photographs who were taken at a place called bachville hornley okay. in uh, switzerland and it's basically the side of a cliff yeah, right. And Billy took video and he also took still images while he was there. Yeah. But this series of, of images shows this craft moving along moving. That's right. and then it moves That's behind a tree, tree and then That's out true. the other side. <laughs> you can actually see the branches in front yeah. of it. It's great. It's like playing peekaboo. It's like they're playing yeah. with you, isn't it? They do. They, yeah. do. They, they want to have fun. So, Race, just go through some of the other pictures. So there you go. Look at that beautiful. That's it. That's, so that we call the sunlight was scene. What was that? In the late afternoon or early morning? Uh, that was taken, yes, in the afternoon. And it's it's part of that series as the craft is yep. moved across. And in there's two actual photographs that are very similar. But in one, the craft is moved a little bit closer mm. to the camera. <laughs> and you can see the branch crossing in front of the, the craft. It's like it's well, actually, it's good that it was that season because, uh, yeah. like a winter season, because but it's it's funny that it's thinking, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna hide. I don't think, yeah. so. I think that's that <laughs> right. size. So, the um, great because, thing about that one, that hmm. particular picket picture, we yeah. could measure the tree, we knew how big the oh, tree yeah. was, oh, so yeah. we could use we it to correlate the size of the craft, so which was it. approximately 21 feet in diameter. Really? Okay, yeah. I thought it would be bigger than that. Okay, all right. Oh wow. See, there you go. So did you so 
when you were there, you investigated that from all of those pictures. So you went yeah. to the, the site. And, yes. Yeah. So how how many years later did you go back after after Billy had taken those pictures? Oh, gosh, we were there in 77. Yeah. Okay. Billy so, took the images 75, 76, 77. We were there with him in 77. And um, yeah, and then over a period of seven years, Lee and I spent over 365 days living at the farm. So that was really quite an experience to see how how many people literally invaded Meyer's space. I mean, banging on the door at three o'clock in the morning, demanding well, they, attention. Um, yeah. yeah, and and also seeing Billy take off on the moped or take off on the tractor, knowing he's going to a contact and then come back hours later. In some cases, he would just in the middle of the night, walk out into the forest. And one night yep. we tracked his footprints. We got up the next morning. We knew he had left. And we knew if we followed, the contact wouldn't happen. Okay. So oh, we right. followed all these muddy footprints to this clearing where the footprints vanished. I mean, they didn't go anywhere. They just stopped. Stopped. And yes, yeah, so they came and got him. Yeah. It's so, little evidences like that that make it interesting. So if you're saying that you didn't follow him because you thought the contact would stop. So for right. other people to have contact along with Billy then. So how do you think yeah. that that resonated then? So they weren't allowed to have contact with Billy. They could be witness to the ship okay. or witness to him before or after the contact, but they weren't allowed to accompany him. Um, and there's a reason for that. First of all, the Pleiadians told Billy that they understood and recognized the frequencies that he emitted, yeah, right. past life recognition, basically. Absolutely. But also, they had studied him for 10 years to make certain that his energy would be compatible with theirs. And that's how that all came about was, yes, we can work with you and you will work with us. And so that was the first contact. But after that, they said, we can't allow other people to accompany you because we haven't checked them. We don't know if their energy will be compatible with us or not. That's interesting. If you're saying that they'd studied him for 10 years, yeah. it's like usually contact happens from an early age growing up. Had Billy had any contact yes. when he was younger? Yes, he did. He uh, was five years old and it was World War II and he and his father were walking and he looked up and saw this craft and he asked his dad, what is that? And his dad said, oh, that must be one of Hitler's flying machines. And so Billy didn't pay too much attention to it. But he, after that, had a contact with a man by the name of Svath. And this person told him that he would be prepared at later in life, he would be having more contacts. Okay. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. Okay. So for yourself, Britt, had you mm -hmm. witnessed, what had you witnessed there at the farm? Well, I wish I could say I saw a craft or a plate in, but I can't. Not in Switzerland. I've seen craft in many places of the world. But in Switzerland, we had different kinds of experiences. We uh, were sitting up one night talking. We had a little camp trailer right next to the house. Mm -hmm. And we were sitting talking and all of a sudden, Billy took off on his moped and we thought, ah, he's going to a contact. So, all right, we wait, we go outside, we're standing around waiting, it's pitch dark. And all of a sudden, everything lit up with a blue-white light that I cannot to this play, day duplicate play play. or explain. Yeah, because it was under yeah. the trees, through the tree, behind it, above it. Mm. It was literally everywhere. And then it blinked out. And then it happened again. It happened a total of three times. And Lee and I just looked at each other and said, well, maybe the Pleiadians are telling us that Billy's with them and it's okay. Yeah. And then he came back later that day and he said, yes, that he had had another contact, quite a lengthy one. So you're saying yourself, you've had other experiences, UFO experiences as well? Yes. I've seen craft. I've and Lee and I got involved with Jaime Maussan in Mexico in 1991, looking at the waves of activity down there, mm -hmm. which are remarkable. We have over 10,000 videos from Mexico mm -hmm. alone. And they had there's some good stuff from Mexico. Oh, incredible. Yeah. And yeah, there's a, a little town called Atlisco that's outside Puebla. 
And it was so much fun because the families would gather, gather grandma and grandpa and the kids in a beer cooler and head up this hill called Casita Blanca and sit and wait for UFOs to come in. And we took a sightings film crew in a couple of times when we took in Nippon television. And everybody always got footage. It was so remarkable. The craft are doing right angles and loop-de-loops around each other. It was really something to see. And then I've had a couple of daylight sightings as well. And then one in northern Arizona that was mm. quite spectacular. Yeah. You can't stop at the spectacular. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> well, and my dad was a rocket engineer, literally. That's what he wow. did. He worked on the early wow. missile systems. And he's very, very left brain. We're going to California, my parents and I, and we look out the window, mom and I do, and we see these little orbs kind of flying around. They're green and they're red and blue. And they're just darting around each other. And then this monstrous craft comes out from behind the big peak there outside, mm -hmm. uh, outside Flagstaff. Oh, and right. Yeah, just, yeah. And it's, it's covered in snow. It's a January night. We've just had a fresh snow, full moon, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful night. Mm -hmm. And this thing just moves slowly and quietly. Yeah. And we're yelling at dad, stop the car. Finally, he did. He pulled over. A bunch of 18 wheel trucks pulled over behind us. Everybody got out and we're staring at this thing. And my dad just goes, where would we land it? It's too big to land anywhere. That was his first reaction. And mom and I are just going, wow, isn't that beautiful? <laughs> so yeah, that was quite amazing. And so, a lot of the truckers got out. One took photographs, oh, but he stayed in touch with my dad when he had the film developed. It was as if it was a 35 millimeter camera. And it was as if somebody had opened the back of the camera and exposed all the footage. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Oh. As it happens, but, you know, yeah. then, so then you're, so for yourself, you were mm -hmm. kind of desensitized to, to all of this, then, then going to work with Billy, obviously. And then how, how did you get to know when, when so? How, how, how was that? Connection. Liam Wendell had been to Ecuador together. My husband spent a lot of years in Ecuador in the jungles down there. And Wendell wanted to go with him one time. So he took him down. And so they had been friends for some time. Mm, okay. Well, fascinating and amazing document. I mean, he he, owned, he actually had one of the biggest collections. He the did. UFO um, photograph collections, didn't he? He did. He had an amazing library, not only just photographs, but books from all over the world. Oh, yes. And oh, he was just, he was an encyclopedia himself when it came to this because he had studied it since yeah. he was in the Air Force working on the Tarmajan project up in Alaska. And it was all so important to him to figure out what it was and to document it. He was just really drawn to it. Yeah, so he, he collected did. photographs from everywhere. Yeah. yeah. And then obviously everyone knew that he had such a massive collection. So then more and more people got in touch contact. Right. Him, if I remember rightly. Right. Yeah. I remember, I remember for Christmas once I got given one of his uh, calendars. Uh -huh. and it had all of the pit, the close yeah. pictures. And there were some amazing ones in California, one in Topanga Canyon. I was like, oh my God, this is just like amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Still got that. Still got it to this day. So, um, race if you're still there can we just see some more pictures and then we're going to go to a bit of footage that we've got i i think we might have time okay let's look at the pictures and then we'll go to um a break and yeah so this um brit this this uh palladium craft right very similar to what i witnessed um uh -huh. in Los Angeles on the freeway i was basically i'd like to say underneath it but i wasn't it was above it was a kind of uh well it was above the car in front the trunk uh -huh. of the car in front of me, but I was kind of underneath it and it had a red orange power source. So um oh. about 45 foot in length. Wow. Red orange power source underneath it. And I was with the wit another witness. But so when I was younger, when I got light years and I just saw that picture, I just like, I know that craft, I know that craft. And then years and years and years later, I got to see that craft again oh. um, in Los Angeles um and hence you know why me and you are talking and and the world is awakening up to everything because we're 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 um we're making 
we're shaking up people, aren't we? <laughs> That's a good this, thing. This disclosure. Oh, good gosh. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Time is to shake up. So have, do we have another picture? Oh, yeah, we got. Yeah. So so what was it called? The other one's called the wedding cake. What did what? Well, was this, this the initial one that you just showed prior to this one yeah. is variation two. This is variation three. And it's it is another shot that was taken near Bachtel Hornley, only it was taken during the winter. And it's it is such a beautiful shot. Just the yeah, snow on the, the ground. Sun. Yeah, you can see oh. the sun sort of gleaming on the right hand yeah. side, the right hand side of it. You know, yeah. um, could you just imagine? Well, I can imagine because I've I've seen. <laughs> but um, yeah, I would love for everybody to have an encounter so close like that. Yes, just absolutely wake and shake everybody up. Right, I think we're going <laughs> to go into a break. Um, and then we're going to come back and we're going to see a bit of um, footage that you've um, that, that okay. we have put together, the old footage. And then we're going to talk about you releasing this to new people. Oh, my God. Yeah. So many new people. So I think are we going to go into a break? I don't know. Hey, UFO conference enthusiasts. We've got another great event for you in 2024. The Saucers and Aliens Kansas UFO Day in Dimension G is being held in the UFO capital of Kansas, Geneseo, on July 6th. This is a fun festival in the middle of nowhere. There will be a parade, decorated yards, costumes, vendors, speakers, and a showing of the movie The Day the Earth Stood Still. Appropriately, an eight-foot-tall statue of Gort and a statue of Plateau will be dedicated. This will be the only museum in the U.S. with these custom-made statues. If you'd like to donate to the statue project or attend the event, visit GeneseoMuseum.com. That's G-E-N-E-S-E-O Museum.com. Be sure to bring your camera when you attend the event. That's GeneseoMuseum.com. The Onyx Network presents a health and wellness spiritually based brand of hemp derived CBD products made by Hopewell Farm in Harrogate, Tennessee. We apply our Cathara energy work with all of our plants and products. Our products made in small batches with only two ingredients of pure hemp, full spectrum crude oil, and coconut derived MCT oil. Third party lab tested for potency and legal THC levels with six strengths of one ounce oil to choose from. Know what you're buying and get what you pay for. From Hopewell Farm, applied directly to a specific area, Hopewell Farm topical salve in one ounce and half ounce sizes made with pure hemp crude oil, comfrey extract, and all natural ingredients. Find the Hopewell Farm link and coupon code on the Unex Network website at unexnetwork.com. That's Unex Network dot com
Welcome back to Make Your Truth. Uh, and my guest tonight is a lovely Brit Elders, and she is sharing the contact case with Billy Meir, a fascinating case of contact with Billy Meir. And it is such perfect timing, like we were talking about um, right now, to bring a new population that do not know about right. Billy Meir or has dismissed Billy Meir. Right. Um, and you cannot fake you know listen we've all made things to try and recreate things okay we've all seen the classic scenes of close encounters blah blah you know i've had mannequins i've had about six mannequins that i was building and make uh, putting clay around putting you know body parts and you know you, you just go bonkers so everyone's <laughs> going to try and recreate something that they've witnessed um so now with all of the footage the metal samples you know for yeah. looking back into it help yourselves my friends you know it's now <laughs> times for all of us for all of the contactees and right. experiences to say you know now you know the frequency is right for us all the, you know it's the timing is absolutely perfect and um it is it is a new dawn of a new age i know it's a crazy yes. day but it is happening now so um and i'm so glad that it's a bit like reopening a case isn't it it's i'm so <laughs> glad that this has come back because i'm such a huge fan yeah. so we are now going to show a clip from your documentary that you did um that's so special of uh, footage of billy and um where the photographs were taken mm -hmm. is race there this is the place, Berger Umlikum, where I took that picture. Show us how you took the picture, Billy. Oh. Maya takes the team to other contact sites and demonstrates how he operates his cameras. I have here a small wheel to turn the film, and I can get the picture. You see, on this way, I put on my camera. Yeah. We're taking yeah. movies, right? Yeah. With a film camera on a tripod, Maya can shoot stills with his 35mm camera at the same time. And then I can start to film here i got the movie when was the ship hanging there up um when it after was jumping by jumping maya means the ship disappears and reappears from that out i always got the electrical hit by electrical hit maya means an electric shock he also noted a light shift at each event That's interesting. I didn't know that. I, I, well, I don't remember that. So, well, obviously, if he's, yeah, so, well, when you're underneath the craft or when you're witnessing, you are experiencing, um, mm. your body's experiencing lots of different um, feelings. And, yes. Well, so that's interesting that you got shocks from that. Well, a good yeah. shocks. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's uh, something like at, at a shock through the magnetic system and that's what some of the scientists that actually tuned in to the metal and to the uh, audio both said it yes, was cool. kind of a, a sharp spike through yeah. the magnetics because they could read it on an oscilloscope that way so that it made perfect sense when billy said that and when we analyzed that footage there are no splices uh, that craft okay. there one second gone the next in which they do very well. <laughs> that's what, that's why this is what, it's not so much a mystery now, but that's how they work. So for your, um, I think, I don't think, oh, and then I've got something that I found. So when I was looking through all of my footage, um, you know, all my bits and bobs, I was in contact with Billy uh, back uh -huh. in 96. Uh -huh. So I had my contact in 93 out in Los Angeles, came back, tried to get my head around it for a couple of years and then I thought right I've got to get in touch with Billy so uh -huh. in which I did so I think I've still got well a, a race have you got the um there you go so there you go yeah. that was sent to me in 96 um uh -huh. from Billy and it had um a letter in it um which I still have and it had various little booklets with it and he sent me um I've still got the stickers that which are those ones on there but you've got the date on it it was um in 96 so it's just to say that you know I was in contact with Billy because I couldn't right. get my head around what I had seen because right. of 
I knew my Palladian sort of connection with with the Los Angeles thing. So yeah, no, I've still got that to this day, which I absolutely I've still got all of my bits and bobs. But hey, <laughs> that's my little um, encounter with Billy. Um, yeah, he was always absolutely brilliant. I, I think you had a team of people that worked for Billy, so it wasn't just Billy yes. sending things out. So um, so I used to get regular bits and bobs sent to me in the post, which I always absolutely so excited because you're right. Back then, we only had VHS. We you know we didn't have the internet, so to have something right. so in the post was just like all oh, my Christmases. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I was just like, no, no, this is just so amazing. Um, so. How important right now is this, you relaunching your your volume one and volume two? It's so on point. Where are you going to go with this? What, what um, How far are you going to go with this? As far as it wants to go. I, I have a tendency to let life lead me. But right okay. now, it's it's very important for me to get it out there and to let people know about it. And I want people to share the information on it so that others know it's available because yeah, right. we can learn so, so much. I mean, I'm talking to Billy on a regular basis and we have Zoom calls and we email back mm -hmm. and forth and he still feels he's very happy that the book's been re-released mm -hmm. and that the documentary is coming out, but he just feels like now is perfect timing. Mm -hmm. So we all need to sort of gather around and recognize Simyasa's primary note to earth humans. Yep. Recognize that you're not the only thinking beings in the universe. Yeah. And I think that is so important right now because we are setting our sights on new missions on moon and on the Mars, mm. you know, and all of this. And it's, we're not ready yet. We're not ready because we're not balanced. No. We don't have the technical spiritual balance it requires to get out there and really work. And we've got to realize mm. that there are other civilizations out there and we can't be dragging our garbage from this planet out there. And when I talk about garbage, I'm not talking physical garbage, yeah. I'm talking the emotional baggage, the, anger, the frustrations, things like that. We have to learn how to release that from our beings before we go try to interact with someone else out in the universe. Oh yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, as you said that, I thought of something, and now it's totally gone because I, I just totally agree with what you say. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, I did. I've just totally forgotten what I was going to say. Oh no. Um, so, oh, that's lovely that you're still speaking with Billy. And um, oh yeah. Yeah. That's so. Can I ask how how old is Billy? Now? He's eighty seven. Okay. And he's in pretty good health. He's. He's got white hair now and a beautiful white beard and yeah. just looks like Santa Claus now, even he though he looked like Santa Claus then. <laughs> yeah. And still that beautiful smile. Yeah. He, uh, he is one of the kindest, most gentle human Humble. beings you could yeah. ever hope to meet. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Considering, you know, his background within yeah. the war and everything. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, I'm, yeah, I kind of get what you're meaning about. The game's going to yeah. pop in. We had that one more picture. Just, just that one more. Pop it in there. Yeah, the big one. My, yeah, my. <laughs> so yeah, so you can see the ridges underneath that one. So so yeah, can the bottom ridge. Can we zoom in a little bit, Racy? Can you do that? I don't know if you can. Um. Well, so I can see the. Well, bottom. I wish I could. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. So right in, right in, yeah, right. So the bottom, the bottom ledge of it. That for me was where the red orange power source was. So then right. you've got that other, the other little ledge, and then it goes up, and then it then it creates the the middle. So right. the bottom, the bottom bit was the red orange power source for me. But it was it, identical, absolutely. I mean, my God, it was unbelievable. But that was it's just a stunning picture. You can see. I wonder how how. how did you sort of estimate the size of that one? Yeah, that one is 21 feet. It's We call it the chimney shot because you can just, at the very bottom of the picture, see an edge of gray. And what they had done in Switzerland in this clearing was they had built a three-sided fire pit so they could burn rubbish and things like that. Right. And we had the trees right behind it on this drop-off that we could measure. So we knew how far they were from the lens of the camera. And then we could triangulate the size of the craft. 
And Billy had said it's about seven meters or about 21 feet in diameter. Gosh. Right. Okay. It's um, beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a great so, shot. Yeah. So also a lot of um, what Billy was told Mm -hmm. to place in his books it's very much like Notre Dame you know there's so much fact in there that has absolutely come true yeah you know um that's unbelievable so again to for new people for those people that want to get into the right nooks and crannies of it all like you say just do it because yes you know there is so much information that the people don't even know what he's probably written you know right. um they're just going to see you know various clips that they watch from youtube or anything like that so it is totally fascinating so where can people go for uh volume one and volume two uh your website um and yeah on my website on britelders.com and that's brit with one t um you can go, it'll tell you all of the places where you can purchase the book. It's available mm -hmm. at all bookstores. You can order it through Amazon or any of the online stores. I shall. Um, the documentary is right now available for pre-order from Beyond mm -hmm. Words Publishing. That information is on my website as well. Mm -hmm. And that way, as soon as your order comes in, we're going to be practically shipping out because the publisher will have the tapes in hand the 25th or 26th. So we will be shipping immediately and you should have it right away. Wow. So that's and exciting. This is, if you don't mind, this is a documentary that was made in 1982. It was released just briefly under the title Contact. It's now titled UFO Contact from the Pleiades, a documentary film. Mm -hmm. But it takes you through all of the steps that happened. It is completely unique. It is old footage. I do know that it has been color balanced and sound balanced though, but it's so important to give people an opportunity to see Meyer, Absolutely. experience what he experienced, right. see the investigation and what happened there. But you get a feel for Billy Meyer, which is yeah, really right. important. You yeah, can't definitely. get that through a book. And there is different information in the book and in the video or the DVD. Yeah. Okay. So when is when is that one being released? Um, it will be available for actual delivery 27th, 28th of this month. Okay. So also, Britt. You are the CEO of Shirley MacLaine. Yes. <laughs> um, well, okay, go for it. <laughs> that's that's actually amazing. It was, yeah. and? it was the Meyer case that brought us okay. together. And yeah. we have been She's... best friends. I mean, she's just an amazing woman. Yeah. But she called us and she was writing out on a limb. And we had just got yeah. that amazing six. book. Years yeah. Ago. Yeah. We had been in Switzerland for six weeks, just gotten home. And she called and she told Lee, I want to go visit Billy Meyer. And Lee says, I don't care who you are. I'm not running tours. And he hung up the phone. <laughs> oh. She waited a couple of hours. I didn't go down in Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. yeah. She waited a couple hours. She called back. She says, listen, I'm writing a book. It's called Out on a Limb. I think he has some important information. So we talked about it and we said, okay, we'll go back. So we went over and she spent five days, and I've got to use this word, interrogating Meyer. Aww. She just questioned him. She had her tape recorder going constantly. Aww. And the two of them would just be huddled wherever you looked. Aww. They were in a little huddle in conversation. It was wonderful. So she really had a great time over there. She and Billy are friends. He's always asking about her and she about him. So it's good. Um, so with your work, what does that involve with, um, Shirley? Oh, well, I run her website. I take care of all kinds of things for her. I can't even begin to tell you what happens there. It's when we started her site, we looked for a CEO and she couldn't find anybody she liked. Now that's not my thing. I'm a writer. I like to, you know, spark my imagination from the standpoint of nonfiction reality. Yeah. And she says, I can't find anybody. And I said, there's got to be someone. She says, I think it's you. And I said, well, why not? I've never done that before. Well, it was the learning curve from hell. <laughs> but, oh. Yeah. And that was back in 19, 
1999 when we started her site. We took her to Europe to meet Meyer in 1980. We've traveled the world together. We've gone to Mexico together. She's, we camped under Popocatepetl as it was exploding, mm -hmm. under Hale Bop, waiting for UFOs to come in. I mean, oh, we yeah, have had that. more fun. That was yeah. 96, wasn't it? Yeah, Hale that Bop? was 96. Yeah. That's right. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. I remember, remember watching. Actually, that was um, that was well, 96, same time as um, when I was in contact with Billy. Yeah, that mm -hmm. was quite amazing. So. How do you think the public might react then to um, you reopening? Well, for, for people to bring it back. Through. Yeah. So far, it has been truly remarkable. Oh. They're looking at it with a totally fresh set of eyes Fantastic. and a different curiosity. And Amazing. to me, curiosity sparks creativity. Absolutely. It makes the thought happen. So they're having fun asking questions. I've been doing... Um, a lot of interviews, but I've been doing groups as well. Just people will contact me like last night, there was a group in Seattle that said, we'd like for you to speak at our group and we want to know more about this. And the openness, the receptivity to mm. Meyer, to the Pleiadians, to what they're trying to tell us is truly remarkable. I am so thrilled that people mm. are at a space where they can go, oh, and say UFO without going UFO, you know, and hiding. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We've hit, we've hit a benchmark where we're ready to really move forward if Absolutely. we want to. It's up to us. Well, we are. <laughs> we, yeah. we we truly are. And um I think I think if I look back, there are some amazing cases, obviously. But yes. For me, obviously, the personally it would have been um, for Billy. And then, so do you have um, um, a totally mind blanked his name, um, Mr. Horn? Do you do you have contact with him at all? No, no, uh -uh. no. Ah, okay, all right, okay. So that oh, that's ufology all all over, isn't it? <laughs> that well, yeah, generally it, happens. <laughs> There's lots of cases like that. He does his thing, but okay. you know our. Our investigation on the Meyer case was about the evidence and about yeah. Meyer. Yeah. What is the man like? What are the messages coming through? Mm -hmm. Primarily, what is the evidence and will it hold up to scrutiny? And it has. And that, I think, you have to have that thump on it aspect to wake up some people. And yes. that's why this case is so important to come back now. And when they get to the thump on it evidence, they also get the messages. They get the the overview of what Meyer and his life was like. Yeah. It's it's not anything. Mr. Horn was not part of the investigation with us. Mm -hmm. He was not associated with us at that time. So I've just focused on what we've done as a way of bringing this back to the public where they want to take it is totally up to them. Okay. If they want to believe it, it's up to them. It's okay with me, whatever they choose, but they're just really receptive to it right now and so full of questions. And that's, I'm loving that aspect of it. Well, the thing is, because obviously now with um, new footage, pilots, Congress and everything, right. it's got this huge questions now of like, yeah. why was this overlooked? Why wasn't this spoken about more? You know, and, um, you know, the footage itself, that yeah. Billy has and other experiences have as well. You know, it that needs to be looked at properly yes. by sort of official people again. Um, you know, definitely. So do, will you be going over to see Billy? I know that you say that you speak with him. Will, will yeah. you go over, back over to, to his, is he still living in the same place? He is living is in he? the same place. Oh, well, I same have his address. Town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, and uh, I hope to go back over there, yes. Gosh, oh gosh, you and Shirley McLean over there. I just think that that'd be just absolutely no, no. <laughs> right. So, um, so as future wise, uh -huh. we know how this is sort of like all going. It's going down the right, the right path, right, right direction. We are following the light, so to speak. Yeah. And it's kind of all of the synchronicities of, like you say, like um, Pleiades is in the sky. It's only in the sky now for one. Uh, David said it's for one week. So the timing. Uh -huh. 
for you yeah. right now for this is absolutely perfect. So perfect. get in touch with David. He'll give you all of the mathematical equations for absolutely everything for, for oh, you. Oh, great. But, great. And also, because also I'm hoping um, I will be doing something with David because obviously, you know, he does all of the harmonical um, frequencies. He's a brilliant Fre young man. Uh, mm -hmm. Ingenious. But bringing it over here to England because, uh -huh. you know, it's over in the States at the moment. But I said, listen, there's some amazing places, you know, Glastonbury, all of his um, work could be over here. So we're trying to sort sort something out for it to come over oh, that here. That would be great. Because it is the right time for all of this now. But, you know, it's perfect, perfect timing. Well, like I said to you, it's like Rolex, isn't it? It's well, if you just sort of let go of things and let the it, universe in, it is always perfect timing. It yeah. just brings you to where you need to be. Yeah, let let it flow. Yes. Let it flow where it takes you. Yeah. Right. The ripple effect. That that great ripple effect. So is there anything new that you've put into the um volume one yes. and volume two? Anything that you've held back or thought or you or you went through and found Oh my God! This didn't actually go in into into the cut or into into the oh. um. Oh my gosh! So any There's so many things that that didn't go into the book, but we did add more things to it. Um, Shirley wrote the foreword. Jaime Hassan wrote the prologue to it. Um, it. There's an introduction, sort of takes you back in time, which is necessary. I yeah, did definitely. a piece telling everybody kind of leading up to what happened prior to Meyer. And then afterwards, some of the experiences that we had, the fact that uh, we experienced some of those prophetic issues. A case in point, we were at the airport with Shirley. We were taking her back in Zurich. We came back to Meyer's farmhouse, walked in. There was a big cross on the TV screen. We had heard on the news that Anwar Sadat had been assassinated and he had been assassinated by one man. And Billy says, what they're saying is wrong. He ran back and he got this big, huge blue binder full of contact notes, started right, coming through it. Yep. And he found the note where Samyasa had told him Anwar Sadat would be killed in a military parade by many people. So that's what I'm saying. It's like Notre time. Dame, wasn't it? Yeah. So yeah. if you look back, and that's the detail that people yeah. need to look into. And that's yeah. just the one incident. There are yeah. so many incidents there. In, yes, in, there in, are. In, if, you, if you go back, I mean, it's something I'll go back and read through. But I remember thinking, oh, my God. Yeah. This is quite amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, that's you know, so that's what you want people to look at. That's what you want people to really take apart and go, Well, hang on a minute, you can't you can't do that. It's like um <laughs> it's when another I... piece of evidence. That's oh yeah, all. it's yeah. it's amazing. I mean, they upstairs are so so clever. When yes. I had had my sighting of the of the craft, uh -huh. I then drove drove to this house, then I had the men in black car there, and then years later did the did a did a talk and I took a photograph of the actual apartment and someone put their hand up and they said do can you see the apartment number and it was the actual date of 9 11 the oh. date the month the year wow. now and 9 11 hadn't happened when I'd had my obviously my experience oh my gosh degree. so so that's when you're an experiencer, you get all of things. And that's just one synchronicity. I mean, yeah. I've got so many syn synchronicities that tie into that UFO encounter, that played in your UFO encounter, um, that people just scratch their head and go, really? And you go, yeah, <laughs> they so are very important. clever. They put it all there. They put it all there for you. So, so people, you know, like, like, like my, my thing from Billy, you know, when I said yeah. to people, well, I was in contact with him. Yes, yeah, sure you were. It's like, well, hang on a minute. There you go. <laughs> you know, so it's like, that's why I kept everything because it was so yeah. important to keep everything. You know, well, synchronicities are huge and you really do need to pay yeah. attention to everyone in your mm. life. They're leading you in a direction. They're informing you of oh, something. <laughs> so it's so important. Yeah. So projects any other future projects besides this one Anything? i'm working on another book that is um, the behind the scenes of what happened in the investigation from the standpoint of more human side of the things we went through and we experienced and 
and like seeing the light at night through the trees, in the trees, above the trees, and a lot of different things and a lot of more personal conversations we had with Billy, things like that. So I've sort of outlined it. I haven't done anything with it yet, but I'll probably play in that. And then I'm writing on some other things as well. See, that's like you said, it's important for people to get to know Billy's background uh how billy is you know yeah. his co-workers that were there because that sort of gives sort of like like the artist's impression to somebody and yes. you get to know the background so that's fantastic that you're doing a follow-up book in regards to that because you can't i think with words you can put more within words as yes. yeah of course the documentary is absolutely fascinating but to to read through and then your own thoughts sither through for you to experience something as well there I know, and like lots of other experiences know, you you can't yeah. walk away lightly after an experience, you know, like a couple, <laughs> no. of, couple of hours afterwards, a couple of weeks afterwards, a couple of months afterwards, depending on the how amazing the encounter was, or a couple of years later. I'm right. 30 years, 30 years ago I had my encounter and here I am now. You just it's it's like I like I saw it like 10 minutes ago. It's exactly. still absolutely amazing. So um and also because because Lee, your husband, yes. he experienced things as well. So as a yes. couple to experience those things, it's really quite magical, isn't it? It was wonderful because mm. we had a very unique relationship. We worked together. We lived together. We played together. We mm. were literally a 24-7 couple. We were always mm. together. Mm. And it was it, it was never anything that was conflicted. It was something that... We just fed on each other's energy. Let's do this. Yeah. Let's do that. Look at this. Look at that. And it was wonderful. And to experience some of the magic in the world, whether it was at Myers or in the jungles mm. of Ecuador, it was just so incredible mm. and so blessed. opening. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Very blessed. Blessed to have had amazing yeah. locations and seen amazing things in lovely yes. locations. Um, as in for yourself mm -hmm. and for other, so when you took, so you're saying that you speak within groups, I presume mm -hmm. now like Facebook, um, and are you on, uh, Twitter and everything as well? Um, Who Facebook, what am I on? Facebook, LinkedIn, um, Link LinkedIn's very professional. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I, That's I, I go into it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So um, I know that race is, but also race has put you there, but also on the links to, on your page and my page, you have various other links that you can go to. And Great. You Thank go you. To Charlie McKay. So, oh, I've been told that, that we're going to go shortly. So this is volume one and volume two can be bought. Where can you buy them? Any place. You can get them on Amazon. You can get them from your local local bookstores and the documentary film which has a similar cover but it says a documentary film mm. is available right now through beyond words publishing let's see what i i dug out my old vhs there you go so look this <laughs> this is, <laughs> it is the original vhs that i had back in back then so i thought it had this <laughs> and yes i do have a vhs a working vhs machine because there's something nice about clunking that in yeah there is <laughs> the lines going <laughs> Well, this is a different oh, film so from that, totally different film from that, and it is going to be on DVD and eventually streaming. So, Perfect. but we're starting with hit, DVD. hit the audience, hit the yep. masses by the millions. That's and what I want to do. And then let them just, yeah. It's a great like wake up call oh. because that's what we need to be doing right now is waking up. Well, we are. <laughs> yeah. We were. <laughs> it's just the others that need to wait. Yeah. <laughs> actually, saying that, I know COVID, whatever, whatever, whatever that is, it actually put a lot of people online to search for all of the yes. activity and everything. So you know what we have, we have a lot mm -hmm. to to answer for for all of that, don't we? Um, yeah. That it has mm -hmm. brought a lot of new people within the industry, um, mm -hmm. podcasters, various things, but also yes. because, I mean, I'm a bit old school. I like all of the older stuff, um, uh -huh. but it's brought a lot of people in. So when you when you put this out there, 
uh, the documentary, it will then stir up a lot of new people and go, okay, Excellent. all right. And, you know, and then we'll, then they'll realize actually how big this whole subject is because we're not just talking craft we're not right. just talking feelings we are talking absolutely frequencies and us as humans really of just trying to evolve to be better people but also to understand what is happening and what right. we're dealing with here because it is quite amazing right race racy hobbs is it time to go i usually get told off or prodded i get prodded and said ben you've got to, you've got to do this oh no he's not saying anything i, mean, I like that when he doesn't say anything he goes, oh, let's just talk about it. is there any oh I'll go away. there he is <laughs> if you don't right. mind me, take a yeah. look at that red clock up there and tell me what it says uh one zero one two zero we were supposed to end the show at 55 oh Oops. let's go Okay, thank you ever so much, Britt. Thank you. Thank, <laughs> thank you, so you. I've enjoyed Britt, this. Thank you so much. I'd love to have you on again after it's been released and let's just talk about the masses of what they're going to say. Let me know when. Thank you. thank you so much and thank you, Rose, for being fantastic. Thank you, guys. Okay. Thank you, Britt, and um, thank you guys for listening and watching The Naked Truth for myself and Britt Elders. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>